mutuals historically have generated capital or retained earnings through um, the slow accumulation of operating at a small surplus over time. Um, that produces challenges when you need to invest in hard assets for the delivery of services, whether that's um, IT systems and computer-based systems, whether it's the provision of um, aged care facilities or um, health facilities. And so it's this need to um, invest in the service delivery framework, which has driven the need for um, greater capital. Now, mutuals have been able to borrow money, but um, that comes at a, a high cost frequently and um, is not a secure long-term source of capital. And a lot of the infrastructure that supports service delivery is, is by its nature a long-term investment. So um, finding ways in which you can raise capital, patient capital, which will be there to support the expansion of your service delivery framework um, is a really critical challenge for mutuals going forward. It's a type of share, but um, it's a share that's particularly tailored to the needs of mutuals to raise long-term patient capital. It's not a, intended to be a, an investment that's used for speculation or for um, trading on the stock exchange with a view to generating profit. Um, it's a type of share that will provide a stable return to investors over a long period of time um, with um, the prospect of being able to sell that share if you cease to be a member of the mutual, but for its face value. It's not a, a product that is likely to be tradable for capital gain. You're investing in a business to generate a return. But it is different in that you are investing in a business that has a social purpose um, and that you are investing to uh, support the provision of services to the members. Um, it's different in that you don't have the same degree of voting control or influence that you might have in a publicly listed company. It's different in that the expectation is that you will be a long-term holder of the capital instrument rather than someone who's looking to generate a quick return by selling it on the stock market. It's different in that you're investing in a business that operates in a segment of the market that traditionally is not open to um, external investors. And so um, you're creating a diversification um, from an investment point of view. It strengthens the financial status of the organisation and is not inconsistent with the mutual status. So the providers of this capital, um, if they become a member of the, the mutual, um, then the mutual has a choice as to whether they have one vote or no votes. They can't have votes that are based on the amount of capital they put in. So it doesn't weaken the mutual um, status and member controlled nature of the organisation but it does strengthen the financial position of the mutual to enable it to invest in service delivery, um, to expand and improve the nature of services they provide to members. MCI members or investors still only have one vote or possibly they can, you can issue them with, so that they have no vote over all or some of the key decisions that are made by members. Um, another protection is um, that they can't uh, vote on any proposal demutualise. That uh, remains a decision for the existing members in the same way. Um, the protections that um, are built into the Corporations Act um, to protect the mutual entities from demutualisation are preserved in the sense that if the, an entity proposes to cease to be a mutual, then those protections continue to apply. The, uh, other provisions that are there relate to the fact that payments of dividends on um, MCIs are purely discretionary so that if there is financial difficulty in the future then um, they have to share the pain. Mm -hmm.